So we're backstage, live at the Crash Mansion. Uh, you got yours truly, Guru, the legendary, in the house with my man, trumpeter extraordinaire, Mr. Roy Hargrove. And of course, we're here to do work tonight. It's my honor to be Roy's special guest. I got my partner with me, Super Producer Solar, in the house. And um, we're just gonna jam tonight. We're gonna do some, a couple of classics. Uh, we're gonna do some new jazz batash joints. And um, man, it's just an honor to be rocking with the man right here. We, we go back a little bit. You know, I've, I've watched his career develop um, and I always wanted to do something with him. So this is, a, finally it's happening. So it feels good. You know, of course, with my jazz batash series, you know, it's all about bringing generations together, bringing different musical formats together, of course, with jazz and hip hop and soul and so forth and so on, creating its own genre and so, and so forth. And, um, you know, Roy has been someone who, I, who I've watched and seen what he's been doing. And of course, he, he came up in a hip hop era, so he's got hip hop in him. So, you know, for, for me and him to be jamming tonight, it, it's, it's historical, you know what I'm saying? How you feeling? Yeah, man, I'm chilling. <laughs> I'm very happy. How's things been going with you? What you been, what you been doing? Yeah, yeah you got albums out, man. I'm traveling, playing, same thing. I've been doing, uh, I, my quintet record just came out, straight ahead, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm working on the big band thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing man. some arranging. Tell me, tell me how you, you, how old were you when you first, this is, this is me interviewing you now. How old were you when you first picked oh, up? I saw your two icons. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. got cool. some that's cool. Yeah. Two icons, when did you first pick up a trumpet or when did you know you wanted to rock the trumpet? Uh, I was, I started playing like when I was about nine. And then when I hit about 12, 13, uh, my, my band director was tight with, uh, with a lot of uh, musicians in the area, cats like D uh, David Fathead Newman and uh, Robert Sanders, and he used to let them come down and demonstrate for us. So that was like my first contact with like improvisation, you know, cause like Fathead and those cats, they play the blues, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, uh, I remember this one day, um, they had the drums playing the rhythm and they had the tubas playing a Herbie Hancock uh, chameleon bass line. Mm. And Fathead took a baritone saxophone solo over it. And I remember watching him play, and there was all this music coming out, but he wasn't reading anything. And I was like, yeah, that's, I have to learn how to do that. Mm. And, that and that was a very pivotal, pivotal, point, pivotal point. Sharpen it. Because so if you up on your game, then, you know, it's going to show regardless. Mm. People are going to see that and feel that. Mm. If you halfway doing it, people gonna see that too. <laughs> there it is. That's what I was gonna say because I think a, a lot of times you get the attitude uh, of certain certain cats thinking that they could just do it do it one day or twice, two days a week, or, or when they when they feel pilot. like it. Yeah, or yeah, exactly, <laughs> or, or be a one time wonder and all that. But to have some longevity, to have some staying power, to have you know, to really have your name out there and be respected for what you do, you gotta, you gotta be dedicated thoroughly and immerse yourself totally into it. Mm, that's right. Yeah, so I, right. I agree with you. That's right. I agree with you. So um, again, you know, for me, you know, with the Jasmine Tash Project, being able to work with accomplished, you know, musicians, vocalists and so forth, and forth and artists that, that hone their craft to the highest form, you know, that that's always been for me, you know, a joy. Well, see, that's that's what it was about for me to like to work with, the, of course, the legendary older jazz cast to get from them, you know, their their whole take on things, and you know, they talked about the same things, the dedication that it takes, and you know, the fact that um, even Donald Byrd used to tell me there's no contract that can hold you. He was like, if you don't, if you want out the contract. Get out, you know. He was like, you know, he he schooled me on a lot of things, just you know, about life, and all of that. And Herbie Hancock was the same. He was like, you know, push yourself. Hold on, hold on. Let me just say something, man. Donald Byrd, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was gonna man. ask you. So Donald Byrd is, for those who don't oh. know, Donald Byrd is the legendary trumpeter, Doctor Donald Byrd, we call him. So uh, yeah, there's you know. a lot of music he made, man. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. And Donald Byrd was like a descendant from Clifford Brown, mm -hmm. and um, 
then he took it like somewhere else mm -hmm. completely. They had records out where if he played as a guest on a jazz record, it was at one point where like they had to write, well, we couldn't write anything about Donald Byrd because he was too famous <laughs> at the time of this recording. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like he reached a level of commercial success that the jazz musicians, you know, never dreamed of. Mm. They got a record him with him called the Catwalk, where he's posing in front of like a Rolls Royce or something like mm -hmm. that. Yep, decked yep. out. Flight time, all those joints, man. <laughs> and the thing about it, he said he had his own jet. He flew his oh own. He had his, he had his own private jet that he bird. flew. He told me in Solar about that. And the thing about him is that, is that he said he was a fusionist. You know, he experimented. And we're a lot of. This, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna play this interview for, for Dr. 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 Yeah, we're gonna oh, play man. it for Dr. Bird. Oh, he talked man. about, and Herbie, Herbie, <laughs> Herbie yeah. all these dudes, Ramsey Lewis, all these dudes, are, you know, they experimented. So they didn't just stay with one so-called yeah. pure jazz right, thing. Yeah, they yeah. all felt that jazz could be more, that they could, they could experiment with, you know, like, like uh -huh. with Ramsey and, and um, with Herbie, they experimented with the synthesizer stuff yeah, and, yeah. and other stuff. And Donald said he walked into Blue Note with a James Brown record and told the Blue Note suits, he said, I'm going to do some jazz with these dudes over funk grooves, with uh -huh. these dudes I got from Howard, who yeah, yeah. happened to be the Blackbirds. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he said all the cats at Blue Note, they was like, they, yeah, no. they was like, nah, they threw the James Brown record out the oh, windows. that's crazy. You know, and of course, it's he had huge, su huge success with that. Come on, yeah. Rock Creek Park, and oh, it goes, the list goes on. You know what I mean? Do it fluid. That on the radio. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> you know, big up to Dr. Burke, because he's been my mentor in the Jasmine Tabs project. The first joint we did lounging on the first oh, album man. in 93 when Jasmine Tabs started, and he toured with me. And he was so cool. He would dress hip hop and everything, clothes, hat to the back. And what I wanted to do was to get the up and coming jazz cats, the older jazz cats, and, you know, um, on the new Jasmine Tabs 4 that, that just dropped this summer, we got you know, up and coming rappers as well. You know, Slum Village, Black Alicious. And so that was always a goal to kind of bring generations of talented, you know, people with vision and, and you know, artistic vision and skill, bring those together. And of course, because we're talking about reintroducing real music to the game, okay? We're talking about hip hop, of course, at the foundation of it, but then elements of course, of jazz, and then you've got elements of soul, um, funk, R&B, reggae even, and of course, even rock and roll, you know? So now, in, in the partnership that Solar and I have at Seven Grand, it's th this whole jazz with Taz thing has been reinvigorated, thanks to Solar, and we've taken it to the next level now and introduced, reintroduced music to the hip-hop heads. And that was necessary, especially coming out of New York because people were talking about hip hop's dead or it's lacking this or it's lacking that or I'm tired of the same old thing on the radio or this and that and so forth and so on. We're reintroducing music but making it fly, making it cool, making it bang, you understand? So you're still doing this with your head but at the same time you're getting music and that is the key to it. So, you know, Jazz Bataz is is historical for that reason for the fact that when there was a void, when there was a lack of, we came with the goods. So stay tuned for more from Seven Grand. Seven Grand is the label, Seven Grand Records, myself, my partner Solar, of course, Jasmine Task 4. Man, that came out August 2007. We had people like Common, Bob James. <laughs> we had my man um, Damian Marley, David Sanborn. We want to get Roy on the next one. Yo, Roy, Yo. just real quick, you'll work with us on, 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 on a future project? Of course, man. Okay. Future project. We're gonna, we are future, future projects. projects. So we're going we're gonna to hook course, up and do something big. You know it. Respect to you, man. We're going to yeah, kill him yeah. tonight.